Are you a pickleball player and do you have an ankle sprain or just ankle pain? Well, this is the video for you. Remy and I are gonna show you some stretches and exercises to feel better, so let's get started. So before we get started, you're gonna need a couple pieces of equipment. So a stretch strap, you, if you don't have a stretch strap, you can use a belt, a rope, um, just something solid and something firm to do some stretching. And then also a resistive band. If you don't have a resistive band, that's okay. You can do the exercises without it, but ideally if you can get one, uh, it'll be very helpful in the strengthening part. And then also just either like a little foam roll like this, or you can just roll up a towel and that's just gonna to be to kind of lift your heel up off of um, either the bed or the couch or the floor to give you a little bit more movement in your ankle. So if you don't have those yet, pause real quick and go grab those and then we'll get going. So we're gonna start off with just a simple calf stretch. And again, if you don't have something like a stretch strap or a rope or a belt, you can do some other calf stretches standing up and I've got some videos for those as well. But just real simply, if this was my ankle that had um, the pain in it, or if I actually had a little bit of a sprain, um, you really wanna just do gentle stretches just to kind of lengthen the muscle. Uh, you don't wanna push so hard where you're irritating it more, or if there's some little tears in there, you just wanna get it nice and stretched. And that's because you don't want it to scar up in a shortened position. So just taking the strap, if you've got a, a little loop that works well, and put it at about the ball of your foot. You don't want it up on your toes because it might slip off and you don't want it down around your arch because then you're not going to get a good stretch. All you're doing is using the stretch strap or the belt to pull. So you're not actively moving it, you're pulling the strap to get a nice stretch in that calf area. So I'm feeling that underneath, feeling it a little bit in my knee because those calf muscles go all the way up and cross the knee. So that's fine as well. And you might feel it down at the ankle. This is a full stretch, so it's gonna be 30 seconds holding it. Again, you want it to be a little uncomfortable. You wanna feel the tension, but you don't want any pain in there. Then after the 30 seconds is up, relax it, give it about a 10 to 15 second break in between to kind of let those muscles reset. And then you're gonna do that three times in a row, just getting that really nice stretch in there. So after you've done those, then you're gonna go um, into some ankle pumps. So this is where you'd want either kind of a little foam roll or a rolled up towel, but really you're just placing it underneath your ankle area so the heel isn't touching because then that's gonna give you a little bit more movement in there. And so with an ankle pump, all you're doing is pushing down as far as you can and then coming up as far as you comfortably can. So you don't have to go slow, but you don't wanna go fast either. It's not just this kind of using momentum, not really getting it. You really wanna feel that movement coming up and then going back down. So you can either do this for time. I'm just gonna do as many as I comfortably can in 30 seconds, or you can give yourself a goal. Like the first couple times I'm gonna do 10, and then the next time I'm gonna try and bump a couple more on there. Uh, but again, you don't want it to be painful. You're just trying to get that movement, make sure everything's moving so it doesn't tighten up and stiffen up uh, if you have that uh, just general pain or a sprain in there. And then the next one is gonna be ankle circles. So this time you're making a circle with that ankle. Now I'm keeping my leg still, so it's not, moving like this. Your knee should really be staying in one spot and the circle should be really at the ankle area. I'm really trying to get that movement in the ankle. You can go uh, clockwise and you can go counterclockwise. Same thing if you wanna do it for time, you can, and then kind of build up in that time period, or you can just do a set amount of reps with that. And then after you get it kind of nice and loosened up, moving a little bit, then you're gonna go into uh, using the resistive band. So again, I, I took this out, but you can put it back in, again, to give yourself that extra movement because if it's on the ground or the um, bed or the couch, um, it makes it a little bit harder. You're not gonna get quite as full movement. So it's nice to have that little roll underneath to get more movement. If you got your resistive band, having a loop on the end is really nice because again, you can just place it around the ball of your foot. Now, be careful with resistive bands because if it's too high, it might slip off. So make sure it's in a good, comfortable spot where it doesn't feel like it's gonna um, slip off and come back and hit you. Same thing, you're just doing a nice controlled pushing down and then control the band coming back up. That's the big piece. So it's not going down and then just popping it back up. You really wanna make sure you're controlling 
the whole movement with the band and don't let the band control you. Um, same thing, you can do it for time and say, I wanna do five and 30 seconds and then the next time I do it, I wanna do six and then wanna do seven. So keep trying to progress it as long as it's not causing any increased pain or soreness or anything like that. Then you're gonna go into going outwards into E version. And the way to do that, if you don't have someone just to hold the band for you, is make a little turn here, so the knot's on the inside, and then wrap it around the other foot. And so this time, I'm just going to turn out. So same thing, you, your, your knee might move a little bit, but it's not a rolling, it's not a rotation at your hip up here. It's really trying to get that movement at the ankle where I'm pulling it out and then coming all the way back in. So out nice and slow and then in like that. So same thing, doing it for time or doing it for reps, but make sure that you're not overdoing it. Less is more to start off with because it might not be painful while you're doing it, but it might get really sore later. So I always say start off with a little bit and then you can pro progress after that. So then the next one is gonna be doing the inversion going in. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna cross it over the knot's now gonna be on the outside of the foot, and then I'm gonna wrap it around the foot here. So I'm just kind of cross over. So same thing, now I'm pulling, so it's going technically inwards if I was on the other side, and then nice and slow coming back out. But again, trying to get all that movement at the ankle, and the leg is pretty much staying in one spot. So pulling in, and then nice and slow coming back. So now for the pulling up or the dorsiflexion, ideally it makes it a little bit easier if someone holds it for you, but you can take your other foot and just kind of push down. And now I'm just pulling up and then slowly coming back down. Now my knee comes up just a little bit because I'm trying to hold it there. You can wrap it around something solid like a table leg, or like I said, just have somebody hold it for you there. But you can, you can kind of do it this way where I'm pointing with the other one and then I'm pulling up and then nice and slow coming down. So that's getting that four way ankle in all directions. Make sure you're starting off with the lightest band, especially if you get a pack where there's a whole bunch of them. Start off with the lightest one because again, it might be a little uncomfortable. And again, if you don't have any resistive bands, you can do those motions without the resistive band and you're still gonna get some benefit from it. So now we're gonna stand up. So this is just gonna be a simple single leg stance or single leg balance. I've got my PVC stick pipe right here just to use it for a little bit of balance. If you need some, you can do it at the counter if you've got a chair, but I always recommend starting off holding on to something if you haven't done these before. Cause sometimes it seems like it would be really easy, but especially if you've got some pain in there, if you've got a sprain or a strain, uh, you might need a little bit help with the balance because you want to be able to do it. You don't want to be moving around so much and wobbling that you're actually irritating the ankle more. So all I'm doing is if I'm holding on here, you can start off with two hands uh, on the countertop or a chair or something, and you're just coming up to the balance. So all I'm doing here is just lifting one leg up. You might be able to see the ankle moving a little bit. It's supposed to be. That's just your body trying to find itself in space. If you feel like when you're holding on with two, that's easy, then you can just go to one hand. If that's still easy, you can do one finger. And then when you feel like you're doing really, really well, um, you can try doing it without holding on at all. Same kind of thing, maybe starting off with a little bit less uh, if you haven't done this before, you know, 10 to 15 seconds, and then slowly working your way up from there. But really, like I said, starting with less and then progressing yourself up, because if you do too much, you're just gonna set yourself back and be really irritated. So there you have it. Those were some stretches and exercises for ankle sprain or pain, especially if you're playing pickleball. If you'd like to help support my channel, click on the link up there. And don't forget to subscribe. Where rent? Yeah, down there. And remember, be safe, have fun, and I hope to feel better soon.